Today we're going to talk about the Umbrella Academy. So we're going to break the rules a little bit on Spirits in the Theater in the fact that I've been talking about movies up to this point and today for the first time we're talking about a TV show. The Umbrella Academy. It's on Netflix right now. I would not have heard about this show if it wasn't for a couple of my interns and then a friend of mine. But I started hearing from these people that, oh, you need to watch The Umbrella Academy. You're going to like it. Blah, blah, blah. And so just out of trust for them and a desire to want to jump on this adventure with some friends, I watched the show. It's 10 episodes. And um, I will admit, after the first two, I was like, I don't think I need to watch this. I'm okay if we don't. But by the third episode, I was like, I think I'm in this. So you might need to give it a give it a few episodes before you finally get in. I will tell you the storytelling is bizarre. Like so the tempo and the attitude of how this story is told is unique, which is cool. And when you can appreciate that, but if you're expecting this to be like some epic drama, like you're used to seeing other shows having been told or written, it's not the same. It definitely has a different tempo and rhythm to it that if you can get on board with that, it's really fun. If you can't, it's mostly like, what are we watching? You know? There are some fascinating things in this show that I wanted to point out specifically for this series because there's a scene, episode eight, seven or eight, somewhere in there, I forget what it's called, but um, Vanya does something that is super dramatic. You are not expecting it. And it's shocking. And she's back home trying to console herself, trying to like fix, figure out how to move forward from this moment, from this event having taken place and it being her fault. And she's in this codependent relationship with this creepy stalker dude who's been kind of manipulating her from the get-go and trying to like brainwash her basically to use her for his own agenda. And so there's a moment where she's sitting in the bathtub. She's just like rocking back and forth, soaking wet. And he's next to her. And she's like trying to like be a person about this and figure out how to move forward. How do I recover? What do I do? Like, how do I, I need to talk to my family about this. And he's like, no, Vanya, you did what you had to do. This is not your fault. And he's over there like kind of coaching her on how this is not her problem. It's not her fault. She was only doing what she had to. She had no choice. And then at some point, so basically the enemy, right? Evil, just whispering in her ear or aggressively yelling in her ear to get her to change her mind to be a victim in this, to be rejected, to be this false hero in her own life, to take matters into her own hands and make this thing what it's supposed to be. And at one point in this conversation, he says to her, Vanya, you're special. Say it after me. Say it. I'm special. She's like, I'm special. He's like, say it again. She's like, I'm special. He's like, say it louder. And he's literally like coaching her through how to agree with what he's tapping into. And you have to realize she's saying in English, I'm special. What she's actually saying in the spirit is, I accept delusion. I don't have responsibility here. I want to align with this man who has a totally different agenda than what's for my good. I'm gonna say yes to that. I'm making space for this in my conscience and my awareness and my priorities. She's aligning herself with distortion and manipulation, not the fact that she's special. She's special, that's not what she's agreeing with in that moment, even though that's the word she's using, right? It's about 30 seconds to 45 seconds of this scene. Profound, such a beautiful, specific, I mean, it's about an ugly thing, but so well displayed what an agreement in the spirit looks like in practice. And it's so pronounced and obvious. It was kind of, it was almost excruciating to watch. Like, oh, this is awful. And then as you go further down this, um, down the story, you watch Vanya's character throughout the whole story arc. She initially is exuding a bit of symptoms of rejection. Like, oh, she's not like the other kids. She was treated differently. She was a bit of a victim here. She wasn't victim-y in her attitude necessarily, at least not at first. It was not overt. But by the end of the show, things are coming out of her that are bitter, that are resentful, that are offended, that are victim-y. And she's and all this anger and angst starts to come out to the point where things get a little bit out of hand. And we get to watch Vanya's journey and relationship with rejection play out in the story. It's one of the more pronounced versions of rejection displayed on film. I think they did a really good job. And it's, you're kind of like, oh, come on. You want to like disagree with her on screen. It's like, that's a, such a dumb decision. But it actually makes perfect sense given her story arc, what she's been about and the way that she's managed herself up to this point. She has moments where she could choose the hero thing, but she's consistently embracing the rejection piece. And at first she starts out a bit level-headed. She starts out a bit objective. She's open. She's open to reason, willing to negotiate. About halfway through the, ep the series, she starts getting into this like creepy relationship that twists her mind and gets her to like fully embrace, I was victimized. This is everybody else's fault. I can't do anything about this and now I'm just gonna like fight and 
blow everything up so that I can be powerful again or steal my voice back or whatever. It's a fascinating display of that whole thing. So even just on that side of things, I actually really enjoyed watching the dynamics. And you see some of the other characters, her family members, try to have a relationship. Specifically, you watch Allison's character try to have a relationship with someone so entrenched in rejection. And you watch Allison try to send an olive branch, try to reach out, try to consistently connect with someone so lost in victimhood and rejection. And so I think a lot of us identify with Allison in terms of having those people in our lives, or we know people who are rejected, who are dealing with lack, a lack of self-worth or self-hatred or whatever. And we're trying to have a connection with them without overextending our influence in their life or trying to become something in their life that we're not supposed to be. So you watch Allison's struggle here, trying to be a sister, trying to connect whilst also abiding by her own moral limitation of she can't go any further than this, Vanya's gonna have to meet her. I love that. It's such a painful struggle you watch them go through in these hit or miss moments that just, there's such a disconnect at times. And Allison ends up looking like the good older sister who actually wants to take care of her sister and wants to connect and doesn't have another agenda. Not perfect, but and has made some mistakes, but ultimately trying to do the best she can with what they have. It's a beautiful display. I think it's just a very real commentary on how a lot of us are navigating the spirit of rejection in our relationships, whether we're the one who is rejected or we're the one trying to connect to the person who is rejected. And I've noticed with rejection, people have typically one of two responses. They either choose to be offended, right? And like kind of wall themselves off from the world and like are defensive and accusatory of circumstances or people's choices or whatever, or they go into victim mode and they kind of cave in on themselves and they totally get lost in the self-hatred despair, I have no worth thing. It's typically one or the other. They can bounce between them, but they usually have a pronounced agreement in one direction or the other with rejection. So you watch Vanya go from a somewhat stable, like functioning member of society to becoming full-fledged, like I'm angry, I'm gonna burn the world, you've ruined my life kind of version, right? Fascinating to observe. And then you watch these other characters have their participation as they engage this conversation. And this is all in a supernatural element, right? They're these guys have superpowers and they're basically like a different version of the X-Men and their powers are bizarre and interesting and it's a really fun show if you can get on board with it and you watch them have to navigate. What does relationship look like? What, is, what does it look like to have power in your life and demonstrate responsibility at the same time? Again, Allison's story arc, really fascinating to watch someone be so powerful and yet have to choose to limit themselves for the sake of connection, for the sake of intimacy and actual love. It's a beautiful, her story is also fascinating. I actually related to it quite a bit. <laughs> um, anyway, I, I would recommend the show. It's a bit dark at times. Um, the, the fight scenes, like I didn't think were as like, the choreography wasn't as rewarding as I normally would hope for, but the storytelling definitely plays out in ways you would not expect. The way they go about making points, you're just, you're not prepared for it. It's a bit disjointed. You're like, wait, what? And which keeps you on your toes. Like you don't know what to expect. The storytelling feels like it's just going a certain way. And then at random, these moments will happen that don't feel super jarring. It just feels like, wait, what? And they're not making a big deal of it. And you're trying to figure out like, wait, does, does that make sense? Did that really just happen? I'm okay with that? You know, and, you're, and then the next episode starts. And you're like, what? It's fascinating. It's an adventure. It's super fun. But also you get to watch these characters get into what they're doing with each other and having to make moral choices along the way. And you guys, I just touched on a couple of characters. There are lots of different characters going throughout this whole thing. Super fun, I would recommend it, um, depending on your genre preference and all that, but I really enjoyed the show. And there are some very specific laced dynamics in this that very much speak to things that we deal with on a regular basis when it comes to intimacy and relationships and responsibility in power. I would highly recommend the show if you're someone that likes supernatural dramas, because that's what it is. And remember guys, when you're watching a movie or a TV show, you're never alone. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. Um, we wanna know, what are your thoughts? Have you seen Umbrella Academy? Have you heard about it before this? Any thoughts below? Well, we wanna know. <laughs>